files for, that look like this. So it's really nicely formatted. You can easily interpret it. So that's the time that's easy. So I did those files. I imported them into MATLAB. And that made a matrix of TEC and time versus site and satellite action. So later, I developed a routine to calculate the average of all these TEC. So I'll tell you more about that later. But I calculated the average. Oops. And then I took all those averages, averages, and um, plotted them. So each plot represents the frame of the simulation. <coughs> so each plot is uh, at one time and for the whole site, the whole area. So this one I'll cover here. Um, you can see there's multiple lines that black circles are hard to see, but that's the area I'm looking at in theory. And um, no, actually, we'll be more up there. But you can see those straight black lines are the paths from the receiver to the satellite. The curved black lines are the satellite path. Notice that you can have multiple satellites looking at the receiver at a given time. So it makes it a lot more complicated to actually work with all these multiple TEC data for one site instead of just one piece of data that you can just work with easily. So I think, yeah, which is that is what it is. So here's an example of the TEC looks like um, from one satellite and receiver. So this top graph is a picture of the TEC on a quiet background, so there's not even it's not that close to the earthquake as a month before. It was a site far away from the actual earthquake epicenter. And you see it's very smooth. There's, it's like a parabola, basically. And then during the earthquake, you'll see, and near the earthquake epicenter, you'll see it kind of enhances there, drops down, and fluctuates. Like that. In that bottom graph right there. So that's a type of time UT of DC, which is 1016 electron per meter squared. So you'll, that's exactly what you see there. You just see these fluctuations, enhancements, and patients. So this is what the movie's going to look like. You'll see this area that I'm looking at, all colored in. You'll see different colors in there. So there would be blue, or yellow, red. Each of these colors represent a level of PEC. So red is a high PEC, blue is a low PEC, and yellow is somewhere between. So what I want to tell you what the movie's about. So more about that, I guess. It was the day of the earthquake. It was, so, the day of the earthquake, near the earthquake, and it, there was a four hour window that you want to pay attention to. The, it was the whole day from 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. the next day, so. And you'll see very large variation in the TEC over the four hour period. So, let's show that right now. Notice the time at the top and the color bar here, and also that's the episode. I'm just going to show it to you now, and then you'll we'll explain it later. Drop suddenly down to about all as low as it gets on 
this propeller. So you'll see it's sort of fluctuating a little bit. It's pretty high still, but suddenly it drops to a little bit light blue. And now it's, so it's about right there. Now it's even starting to drop a little more. No, actually, it's fluctuating, but it drops a little more, a lot more, going down pretty fast. So then it'll start fluctuating some more. So you'll notice that it turns lighter blue, darker blue, lighter blue again. Just keeps doing that until it, and it works its way up, but it still fluctuates. So you'll notice it's still fluctuating a little bit. It fluctuates for most of the movie. So and it's at yellow right now. So it's going to keep going up and keep fluctuating like that. So it's basically increasing, decreasing over and over. And that's exactly what you expect to see during the movie: these fluctuations, just up and down. And maybe maybe it has a constant path going up, but it's mostly going up and down. Well, no. It's, it's fluctuating a lot, basically. So, eventually it levels off. I'm not sure if it has the data, but I'm pretty sure it's just supposed to level off. So, it's still fluctuating those, pretty high. And it's about to level off soon. It fluctuates a little more, ends at nine, so. Now it's leveling off, but it's actually going to fluctuate more after this. And then it's going to level off right after that. <coughs> some limitations in the way the research was conducted. So we looked at the relative variation of the DEC instead of the actual value. So normally you just see positive values. You wouldn't see all these negative values or whatever. But that's because we can't, there's biases from the receivers and satellites that we can't actually count for. When we count for the satellite, we can't really count for the receiver ones. It's very difficult to do so. We just ignore it. So we're looking at the relative DEC, which is fine for this because we're just looking at the fluctuations. We're not actually looking at it, what it actually is, because that, that's just more information than needed. So another problem was the interpolation method. It wasn't really problem, actually. Um, it was just, there were some points that weren't actual data, they were just estimated. So, but it, they should be pretty accurate. So the next thing we want to do is we want to say, was this an earthquake or was this something else? So we, we could have been multiple things. We looked at these geomagnetic parameters, such as the magnetic in index, KP, which relates to magnetic storms, the sunspot number, which relates to solar flares, and the solar flux F10.7, which relates to ultraviolet radiation. So we got this data from, from the national site, actually. So it should be pretty good data. So it's from the National Geophysical Data Center. And they have, they have a lot of these sensors that measure these things. And we got data for a whole month. We actually got data for more than that, but I've done more than this movie, so there's more there. But, so now you'll notice those are when when those values are when those equations are met. So when the solar flux is less than 100, it's pretty low. When and the same thing, some sort of less than 90 and magnetic index less than four. Now notice these two are pretty high at some points, so. This one was very high, you know, it's times 10 to the 2 over there, so that's 900 or so. But that was two days before the earthquake, that was like four days before the earthquake. And when you get to the earthquake, it's somewhere around 100, which is about right. It's not, all these points are higher than usual, but they're not enough to actually say, to cause these fluctuations. They're too low for that. So, to conclude, I'd like to tell you that, um, what I did was I made these movies, I made multiple of them for the month before, the day of, and the month after, basically. And also the day after. And they show uh, they show intense fluctuations on the day of the earthquake. So and they clearly indicate that there was an earthquake happening. At least on the day of the earthquake. But what we want to do is we want to do we need more investigation. This is, these are preliminary results. So you aren't they aren't they're good, but they aren't great. Um, and we should, we should investigate the TEC over a 
longer period of time, like maybe a year, maybe more, to see how long these actual fluctuations persist. And then we also want to understand why, what these fluctuations will look like for an earthquake. Because we want to make sure it's not some variation in the, in the magnetic field or sunspot numbers or whatever that are causing these earthquakes. We want to make sure it's the, T's, the uh, earthquake itself. I'd like to thank Japan Gina for providing all this TDC data on top of it. And Professor Kosuke Heki for the Fortran code and a lot of help with all that converting from Brandex to um, text. I'd also like to thank Dr. Cornelly, Dr. Free, and Dr. Hammerstrom for their help and support. Thank you. Absence of electrons. Yeah. 
like that blue, yeah, so it will cause it to drop suddenly instead of going through this smooth, it will drop. And, and then it could go to another type of patch where you have more electron than it rises. And that's, what you, that's what the fluctuations are. Typically, we do that. It'd be like a smooth curve. Did you, did you say you made multiple movies? Yeah, I made uh, four. And so the one way before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you? Um, the fluctuations were less, but I think I might have seen a little bit, but not. I could have definitely said, so I think it wasn't that much more. There wasn't So one other thing that's been defeated in the research that Joe has done is um, in order to see better what's the difference between one month before, let's say, and, and the month of the other day, you have to remove the back by the So you're going to have little fluctuations that do with that. And this, this is a tough problem that we're still trying to figure out how to approach this problem. You know, we, we had some meetings with some scientists uh, with us and various other people and we talked about it, but it's a pretty tough problem. And so eventually we'll have to remove the light wire analysis completely and just look at the fluctuations. Yeah. Yeah. That's a couple of years away. Any other questions?